everybody has known basically from the start that you can install Windows on the Steam Deck because it's just a handheld PC as Valve has stated many, many times. But before a couple of days ago, it wasn't exactly viable, mainly because for the custom and non-standard hardware, drivers didn't exist. So you could run Windows on it, but it would not be a good experience. But now there is a GPU driver, Wi-Fi driver, Bluetooth driver, and SD card reader driver. And that's all great. But there's one important driver that's missing, and that's audio. So right now you can install Windows, but the speakers and 3.5mm jack will not work. So if you want to have audio on the Steam Deck, which you know, for something you want to play games on, you probably do. You either need to use USB-C audio or Bluetooth audio, which, you know, isn't the end of the world. It's still better than nothing. And those drivers are available over on the Steam website. But one other limitation it has, I don't know how they managed to ship the device with this limitation. <laughs> so everybody knows that Windows 11 has the whole TPM requirement. And everybody has known about this since before Windows 11 came out. This ship with a BIOS that didn't have TPM enabled, so you can't actually install Windows 11 right now, you were limited to Windows 10. Which, at least from the last time I checked, might actually be a good thing. I don't know if the Windows 11 game performance has actually improved since then. I know there are means to get around the TPM requirement at this point, but it's not as simple as just saying, here is the Windows 11 ISO, and just boot off that. So when all of the Windows drivers and BIOS updates are available, should you go and run Windows on the Steam Deck? Well, once again, you can run Windows on the Steam Deck, but you have to keep something in mind. Lastly, we're providing these resources as is, and are unfortunately unable to offer Windows on Deck support. If you get stuck and need a way back to the default Steam Deck OS, please follow these recovery instructions, and basically it tells you how to reinstall SteamOS. What Valve is saying here is we know that some of you guys are not going to be happy with the SteamOS experience, or maybe there's going to be like one specific game you want to play that only works on Windows. Maybe it's like an anti-cheat game or something like that. And we know that some of you guys are going to do that. So we will offer you drivers so you go away. We'll make sure the drivers work. We'll make sure they get updated. We'll make sure all of the drivers are available. But don't bother us with problems because we cannot fix Windows. Now, you may think that just because I'm a Linux guy, I don't want anyone installing Windows on the Steam Deck. But ultimately, what I want is choice. If you want to use Linux, that's great. It's much easier for you because you don't have to reinstall anything. If you want to use Windows, also fine. It's your device. I don't really care. And I would love for the experience to be great on both. Because choice is great and all, but if one of your choices is completely terrible, why would you ever make that choice? But resources aren't infinite and we have to be practical. By practical, I mean that Valve doesn't like to hire people. But besides just that, Valve has spent a lot of time and a lot of money designing and crafting the Steam Deck experience. So when you buy a Steam Deck, I'm sure they would like you to experience the Steam Deck in the way they have developed and the way they control. Because sure, they can improve the Steam Deck UI and the Steam Deck drivers, but there's only so much they can do to improve Windows itself. Sure, they could like offer a customizer, so that gets them into like really weird legal gray areas, or they could offer a configuration script to get Windows working the way they want it to work. But if you then chose to use a vanilla Windows setup, well, if something goes wrong, there's not exactly much they can do to help you. And it's exactly the same over on the Linux side as well. The only Linux distribution which is supported by Valve is Steam OS 3. That doesn't mean that things like Arch or PopOS or Manjaro won't work. In fact, you can probably get these working incredibly well, get all of the extra SteamOS stuff over to those distros and have basically the same experience but they're not supported by Valve, so when something goes wrong, it's not Valve's problem. With something that Valve doesn't control, they can't stop you giving yourself a bad experience. But on SteamOS 3, they can. Or at least provide you with a good out-of-box experience if you break it later, well, that's another story. 
but with SteamOS 3, they know exactly how it behaves and how to change it. So if people are having some sort of problem, they can go and easily push an update and address that problem for everyone. Now, this might be a controversial take, and I might be wrong in the future, but even if Valve wanted to assign the resources to make the Windows and Linux experience identical, I don't really see them ever doing so. For years now, Valve's been trying to decouple gaming from Windows. So if you want a game on Windows, that's totally fine. But if you want a game on Linux, that's also fine as well. They see the direction that Windows is going with the built-in app store and think it's eventually going to be a lockdown environment like, say, macOS is or Android and iOS are. And I can totally understand that concern. We've had the Steam machines back in 2015. A couple of years later, we had Proton. And now we have the Steam Deck. All of these have been Linux-focused projects to bring gaming to be on the PC, not just on Windows. Steam machines were dead on arrival, but Proton has been a massive success. It's nowhere near perfect, but there are so many games that you can play on Linux that were not possible whatsoever before. And the Steam Deck is attempting to bring Linux gaming mainstream and opening up a lot of bridges along the way. Things like how a lot more anti-cheat games are now working under Linux. It's not perfect by any means, but it's so much better than it was before. And some titles like Elden Ring, due to the way that Vulkan works, actually run better under Linux. And that's just in the short term. A long-term success could see handheld PCs become a legitimate device class. It's been tried many times in the past, but the problem with back then is the systems were very slow. Nowadays, you can build a system that I don't understand. It seems like magic how powerful something like the Steam Deck is. And I don't care about native Linux gaming, I care about good Linux gaming. And Valve seems to be basically the same. And a successful Steam Deck is going to encourage more developers to make sure their games play nicely through Proton so everybody can play the game perfectly fine. Now, if you just don't care and you still want to install Windows on the Steam Deck, as I mentioned earlier, there is this page here with links to all of the drivers. Keep in mind that uh, when you install Windows, you'll either need to have a USB-C Ethernet adapter or have all of these drivers on a thumbstick because you won't have any way to download the drivers because of the lacking Wi-Fi driver. Sadly, I don't have a Steam Deck of my own. I would love to get one at some point, but on the bright side, basically all of you day one buyers are my beta testers. You can go and make sure the software works all nicely, and then when it does, I will go and buy it then. So thank you for your service. <laughs>